Welcome, welcome, welcome to Basketball Heads Live. I'm your host, Glenn Poole Harding. And tonight, we have a very special guest. This basketball head is a New York City great that has been on people's radar since he was learning how to play with his dad at the legendary Dean Street Park. He was destined for greatness. At 11 years old, him and five other players created history. In the 1918 AAU tournament, he led his team, next squad, to the AAU National Championship and won the whole thing. Along with teammates Lance Stevenson, Ashton Gibbs, and others. After dominating the AAU scene, this basketball head continued to do the same at Christ the King High School. He helped them win the Catholic School City Championship as a junior. The late New York City legend Tom Kachowski once said, the reason college coaches love him is because of the way he plays. So at the University of Florida, this basketball head didn't miss a step. He finished his career as Florida's school record holder in assists, 547, and minutes played, 4,358. He ranked fourth on the Gators list all-time scorers with 1,777 and second in three-pointers made, 285. He made his mark as an all-SEC player by hitting clutch shots and scoring in bunches when the game was on the line. After college, he played in the European Professional Basketball League, and due to injury, he sidelined for a while, but we already know he's going to be back very soon. Without further ado, help me welcome to the show, Christ the King and University of Florida great, Irvin Walker. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? ready? Yes. 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 You have you just have listened, listened to, to, to the world, world of chaos. chaos. Where everybody, Where everybody goes, goes hard. hard. Come on, come on. Go hard. 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 Or go home. Never back down. You gotta hold your own. Go hard. 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 East Coast. Go hard. West Coast. Go hard. Midwest. Go hard. Dirty, dirty. Hit me up, everybody. Get on. Your tickets because the game about to start. What's up, fam? What's up, my boy? How you doing? I'm doing well, man. Doing well, man. First of all, uh, can you turn on your volume just a little bit? Uh, give me one second. All right. Welcome, everybody, to the room. Welcome to Basketball Heads Live. Thank you for joining us. We got the one and All only right. Urban Walk in the building. What's going on, young man? Not much. Just hopping around, trying to get better, but watching uh, some of this girls' championship game. Yeah, yeah. Who, who was winning last time I, I was? I looked. Uh, Stanford, Stanford was up. Stan yeah, Stanford up by four right now. About to be start of the fourth quarter. Yeah, that that uh, Gonzaga game was crazy last night, right? Yeah, that was crazy. I'm happy they won, though. I want to see them versus Baylor. They've been chipping at it for years. Just I think ba I think Baylor going to get them, though. It's hard to go undefeated. When the last yeah. time that happened? I, I don't know. My history not that good. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't tell you either, brother. So yeah. I, I don't think that happened since UCLA days. Yeah, I know. It's been a while. I know that. Right, right. So... I want to ask you a question. I think everybody already knows already, but uh, this is the question I ask everybody who comes on the show. Who introduced you to the game? Uh, my my father introduced it to me. Um, you know, he used to go down to the gym with his with his you know his peers, his friends, and they used to play pickup ball like every Saturday and Sunday. And I would you know go with him like maybe three years old, four years old, and get on the court, run around when they, when they done. And, uh, you know, just throwing the ball up at the hoop and stuff. Okay. All right. All right. What what part of Brooklyn are you from? Uh, Best Stuff. 
That's nah. I, look, I gotta ask these questions like I don't know, young brother. But I'm just gonna keep asking the way. <laughs> uh, do Definitely, man. Uh, definitely been respecting you and your grind since you were young. So, uh, what was life growing up around the game with your dad at Dean Street Park? And who are some of the notables that you noticed out there playing with your dad? Uh, well, when I, when I used to go to the park with my dad, you know, he was playing in the gym, not in Dean Street. Like, they used to play in the oh, gym. Okay, okay, okay. So, okay. It, 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 it was nobody, like, you know, it was just his friends, regular people. And uh, actually, one kid used to come down. He was in high school at the time, uh, Justin Wilson. He ended up yeah. going to, he went to uh, Malloy. So, I kind of looked up to him, and, like, as a kid, you know, I wanted to, you know, be like him and like that's what I I used to see him killing my dad and all of them. So you know <laughs> I, I feel he was the best thing out. So I uh, right right right. So I kind of it's always up. that spark from that player that kind of light that fire under us. You know. So yep. salute to Justin, man. Yeah, definitely. So then uh, one of my dad's good friends, you know, he took me down to a CYO team. I was like five. Uh, St. Vincent is in Flatbush, I believe. And uh, I was playing with the seven years old. I was too young. So that's a, that was my first team. That's kind of how I got, you know, started with basketball. So you've been playing up your whole life, huh? My whole life, yeah. That's all I know. I, I tell kids all the time, it's, it's best to play up and play with people that's older than you and get bumped around a little bit so you can hold your own. So by the time you play with guys your age. Yeah, yeah, like I, it was. I was literally too young. They didn't even have five years old, so I, ha I had to play with them if I was gonna play. At that point, and uh, I held my own. So was that the age that you caught the bug? Yeah, that's when I. Yeah, when I, when I really, I could say like some people may not believe it, but like I was even hitting threes like at five. I started, and I was just enjoying it. You know what I mean? Like just playing, and it was more so my dad was coaching. Actually, my mom was coaching first, and she knew nothing about basketball. Well, so salute she, to mom. Yeah, she was just yelling, get my rebounds. That's it. She nothing else. <laughs> and my dad commenced to helping her out. And uh, so it was like I was playing with my parents and just having fun. Oh, that's dope, man. That's dope. So Justin coming up was the, the best player in the neighborhood that you saw first. He was the guy. That I saw, not from my neighborhood so much. Though. Like I said, my dad used to go to a gym. It was like maybe 20 minutes out. So me at three, four, five, like at that age, that's all I, that's what I really saw of, you know, as far as people playing, it was him. And so I, I thought he was great. You know, he was playing against the older guys, so it wasn't fair to them, but, but I thought he was great. That's dope. That's dope. Do you remember your first game and how well did you do? And what was the experience like for you? Well, my, my first game, it was we lost eight to four. I don't know how many minute quarters we was playing. I had all four, and uh, I remember I I cried the whole way home. Like I was I was sad. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So. so they was all three girls too. <laughs> that's right. And and when basketball hits you like that early on, and your feelings involved in it early on, and you love it that much. You know, good things are coming after that because you want to work hard to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Yeah, definitely. But I, I would say for me at that age, and then even as I got, I got older, I say around ten, eleven, it was never like it was no no stress for me with it. Like I was just you know playing, having fun. My parents never like you know forced me to you got to do this, do that. So it was just I was having fun with it. Go to the park. I'm playing with my friends. We playing. I'm my little teams I'm playing with, I'm playing, having fun competing. And then around, I say, 11 years old is when, like you spoke with Mike, we went to the Nationals and we won. And that's when I, you know, at a young age, I realized this is kind of serious, you know? Wow. That, I was just so amazed by that story. I heard the story. I know about the story. Um, I'm getting some feedback. Is it me or I, I don't know? I'm, like I hear my voice coming back to me. Oh, um, for me, I'm I, I hear you good. I'm regular. All right, cool. So, but when I heard the story, I was just so amazed and blown away that you guys, that they young, were only six plays 
Because usually when you're that young, it's hard to kind of balance things emotionally during the game that's moving at such a fast pace and games out primarily back to back to back to back to back. All right. So for you guys to do that and hold you your own and win the national championship, that puts you far beyond anybody or any team that I've heard accomplish that. Yeah, that was, that was crazy. And you know, at that time, we, you know, we 11 years old kids, so we we didn't even know what we was doing. We had never, well, I know I never been like, you know, out of like that was the first time probably I was on a plane to playing a game. You know what I mean? So like I said, it was just we having fun. We was playing and we was winning. We didn't even realize like we not supposed to be winning. We didn't even understand that. That's real. That's so real. And when you don't know, sometimes that's a good thing. Right, yeah, we didn't even know. We didn't even understand the significance of what we did or what was happening while it was happening. But you know, as we got older we understood. Once you start reading about the hype and reading about the other players and the top fifth grader here, top fourth grader here, that can kind of seek it to your mental. But when you don't know, you just like y'all. Yeah, we didn't like we didn't we didn't know none of it, but it it was a hell of a tournament, hell of a ride. That's dope. So the whole team net situation, which no longer exists, uh, I know Coach Moore told me through his perspective. How was the experience for you, uh, you know, being on the first team and starting the, eight, starting the program from scratch? Yeah, like I said, that, it, it was great for me, you know. Uh, Mike is somebody I talk to daily, every day, basically. You know, he, he, was, he was always there for us, you know, motivation, coaching. But it was beyond that with me, with me and him. You know what I mean. So, and like I said, once again, at that age, we didn't even know what we're doing. That this is not normal to just start a program. And uh, like I said, we was having fun with it. So we, you know, as far as New York, we was in our age. We we really, I think we might have lost one time or twice, maybe. You know, and um. Like, I'm talking about we was winning by 20, 30, like, against the top teams, Gauchos, Metro Hawks. Like, so, it, that, it, like I said, the whole from fifth grade that to eighth grade. That team should be in, New York, in the New York Hall of Fame, for real. If they that got one, we, that team should definitely be in there. We, we did some things. Yeah. But then Mike was so great with us. Like, you know, at that age, most teams wasn't really traveling, like, as much. They'd go somewhere, but we was – kind of on the road every week and we didn't even play in New York as much. We started going to Maryland, whether it's to Jersey, Philly, flight to Indiana, Houston, like he always just wanted us playing those, the top guys around the country so we could always gauge ourselves and know what was out there. So I could say by the time we got to high school, college, any, it was no surprise. We had seen all the top players and everything. Oh man. That's so tough. So now, one of the questions of the night. You from Best Style, brother. Mm -hmm. Why not the PSL? Boys High, Lincoln. Lincoln, Tiny, my guy, too. Now, now, Christ the King, great school, uh, great program for years, one of New York City's uh, great high schools. Why not the PSL? Well, for me, uh, like I said, when I went to St. Vincent, the story behind Christ the King, there you go. I went to St. Vincent, like I said. So by the time I was like seven years old, Jafet, I don't know, you know, Jafet McNeil, he was in like maybe, I don't know, whatever he was, but Coach Oliva was coming to see Jafet play. And the games was running late. So our game was before his. So he, he happened to see our game. And I played a great game whatever, like probably the best of my life at that moment. And uh, so, you know, he was close with Jafet. He talked to Jafet about me. And they invited me to the camp in the summer. So I went to the summer camp, you know, regular camp, basketball. And I was playing really well. So for there, Christ the King was just like, as it was like I kind of grew up there, you know what I mean? From nine years old, I'm going to the camp every summer. So it was just I had the relationship with the school and comfort comfortability and link it right. too far to that spot is Christ the king right here for me 
Wow, wow. I think my man Roy is in here, and, and I was never going to Jeff. Never that. Well, at, at least if Lincoln wasn't that far, we had a shot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. I, I know about that, uh, that commute, bro. Woo! Nah, Great. yeah, that. Yeah. So from Christ the King, that was it was easy for me from here. Oh, okay, okay. So, how was your growth in high school, and what year did you come in your own? Uh, you know, in high school, I said, you know, I was I was always like a recognized recognizable player. You know what I mean? So, from freshman on up, but I would say, uh. You know, my freshman year, I struggled a little bit at times. Just not that I played bad games, but I had to change my shot. I used to shoot a push shot. So the coach push told me, you know, forbidden. yeah, from my, tell, from my people, tell people about that because I, I, I would explain that we all start out shooting at the rim like that, right? Yeah, yeah. And then after a while, we, we kind of developed to something different. How was that transition for you? No, it, it was it was kind of difficult because at the same time, I wasn't strong enough to shoot threes, like from the the jump shot. It was always, I was shooting from my waist as a kid, as a kid. But as I was getting older, that shot was harder to get off. You know what I mean? So yeah. I began, you know, a little more push-ups and just keep practicing with it and sticking with it. So I was able to shoot like the mid-range like that. But the three, I was too. I wasn't strong enough. So now I'm in between shots. I'm shooting two different ways in the game, you know. But you know, by by the time the end of the year got, came, I I became you know stronger. So I was able to uh, I was able to start shooting my threes like regular jump shots as well. But uh, you know, just it was always I got a lot of different things from different people. You know what I mean? Christ the King, the, the mental was good. The stability. And everything the system they teach you is good. Going into college, you know, certain things you learn. With Tiny, I got, you know, the toughness, the edge. I was playing with Juice All Stars and, and AAU by the time I got to high school and with the 17. So, once again, we playing, you know, I'm playing with the older guys. So, you know, I just tried to take different things from different people. Right, right. Okay. So, when you was at, at Christ the King, what teams gave y'all the tough battles, and what player gave y'all the most fits? Oh man, uh, it was it was tough games every night. I mean, you all, you had Rice with Kimba, and Chris Fouch, and Duran Scott. This is my senior year. I'm talking. Uh, mm. We had St. Raymond's Truck Truck and Omari Lawrence, uh, Holy Cross. We had Sylvan, another McDonald's All American. Lachlan had. A young Deron Land, Javon Pinkston, mm. all of that. So it was, it was tough battles every night. And uh, you know the usual, you know the top players, uh, Sylvan, he always scored, you know, about 30 points on us. Kimber and Rice, they was always, you know, they was always tough. And Truck gave us, he played well versus us a lot too. Nice, nice. All those guys, listen to people, when he runs off those names, New York City basketball was lit. Yeah. And that was and, that and, was and every listen, year. We still, we still putting out some players, so but listen to the names you talking about. Crazy. Yeah. And when I was young, you had like you know, Rice had Edgar, Edgar Sosa, Curtis mm -hmm. Kelly. So every night, every night it was it, it, it was a war. If you ain't bring your guns in the battles, you leaving out in the body bag. Right. Disgusting. Crazy. Yeah. So now. Those IS8 battles, man. ISA. That's crazy. my I, to this I, day, I, 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 that's I probably my so favorite much. tournament for sure in New York. What'd you say? I said ISA definitely was my favorite tournament in New York, hands down. Listen, you went out there and you made that park your home. Like yeah. the people when they knew you was playing, trust me, they came out. Because we all yeah. came out. Yeah, I I say from young, I mean, I used to go there and sit there as a kid and you could watch games from, you know, from eight, in the, nine in the morning to four or five at night. So I, I was always, my man said, Brian McMichael. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a funny story with that. He loved that story. Ah, this this was part of me yeah. coming up to get off topic. Coming up, I, I used to go to the park, 55 Park, right by my crib. 
and play one on one, you know, all day, one on one, one on one. Brian was older than me, and uh, I played him one on one one time, and he beat me like seven zero. I think I was like, I don't know, maybe seven eight. He was ten eleven. I don't know, something like that. Yo, I cried. I'm not gonna lie. I, I used to hate losing. I I couldn't stand it. You know what I mean? But all those things I think prepare you as like a New York player. Right. Look. Nobody, I, I, I don't know anyone who, who didn't get, you know, touched on a little bit. I, I've, I've seen Secret Weapon, Pete Edwards, right? Let's talk about the, the, the CEO, the founder of the league, right? Mm -hmm. Playing against Pearl, the soul in the hole. Game crazy. Oh, yeah. Him and Pearl going at it first half. He giving Pearl the business a little bit. Mm -hmm. And Pete Edwards had the defense, which is crazy. But it wasn't until the end of the game where Pearl kind of stole the ball right. and went to bounce the ball up the floor and dunked it for the yeah. game winner. But those matches, right? People would know that the guy who running IS8, you got to be in the know to know. Right. That the guy who runs it. Yeah, I heard, I heard Pete was nice. Yeah, I heard Pete oh, nice. my God. It's crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Yes. They ran the 80. I got I got two ISA chips. ISA chip. Yo, that oh uh, man. What 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 uh what ages you wanted? I won my uh my senior year actually we won the spring and the fall, but I our team was crazy though. It was like we had me, Tyshawn Taylor, uh Samato Samuels, Ed Davis, E Banks, and then off mm -hmm. the bench we had people like Dewan, he went to Hofstra, we had Mookie. Went to Syracuse, Quintrell Thomas went to Kansas. So I, I think our team was our team was crazy. All right, Er. Question of the night. Who asked you, boss, to let you know that you was one of the best in the city? Say it again. Who asked did you bust to let you know that you was one of the best in the city? <laughs> Yo, I, I'm not gonna lie to I, I I knew that from young man. I I can't say it's like a particular person, but I was always you know like coming up from fifth grade. I was ranked like number one in the country, you know, after the nationals and everything. So from like five fifth grade to like seventh eighth, I was number one. Mm. So I was always kind of doing my thing. So and like I said, New York, it was like we we was always on the road. So I really wasn't even thinking about New York like that. So people was coming after you. You was the top dog. You was the one people was chasing down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no doubt, no doubt. That's real. So now, you know, you wrapping up at uh, Christ the King. What was the recruiting process like for you? And what schools did you visit? Yo, it was, it was crazy for me again because everything happened kind of early. Just like with my high school, I chose Christ the King, but everybody kind of knew that. So I really, uh, I was looking at two schools, to be honest, Villanova and Florida at the time. And I have, I really, I loved it. I wanted to go to Villanova at first, to be honest. And then they had signed, you know, so many guards in the class before me, with Corey, uh, Malcolm, A, Scotty Reynolds was still there. So then I took a visit to Florida. I had visit, I just went to a game on the campus uh, with Villanova. Then I visited Florida. I was getting some calls. But once I got on that campus and I just saw, like, how they was living, how life was, the weather, everything, I, I knew that's wh that's where I wanted to go. So I, I knew I wanted to go there before they offered me. You know what I mean? So when, once they offered me, for me, it was a no-brainer. It was, like, early my junior year, I took the – I committed to it right then and there. It didn't, it didn't have to go no further. I know that's what I wanted to do. Wow. So having your mom and dad around – did that help you uh, make those decisions and help you grow as a man, like going from high school to college and leaving New York City? Yeah, I mean, my parents definitely, they helped me a lot, always supported me, teaching things. You know, if anybody know me, my parents is at every game. But when it came to decisions like, like, decisions like that, my parents really didn't even, you know, they just supported me. I think they had enough trust in me. It was, it was more like, if that's where you want to go, that's where you go. We support it. Yep. You know what I mean? I, as long as I'm not doing something stupid, I, they pretty much let me go. Like, I wanted to go to Christ the King. And uh, it was like, you want to go there? That's where you're going there. You know what I mean? 
Did that shock shockwave? Because I know you playing with Juice. People looking at Tiny going, oh, boy, you got another one, boy. You got another one. Yeah. No, but before, actually, before I started playing with Juice, Juice, that was when I once I was in high school. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. So before that was Team Next. We stopped at like eighth grade. You know what I mean? Gotcha. So it was it was, and I had a relationship with Tiny at that time. You know, you call. You know what I mean? And right. So after I, after I was in Christ the King is more so when I started to play from there. So once you got to Florida, was there any transitions you had to make coming from high school to college? Definitely. But it it wasn't it wasn't as hard as as some would make, and I think that's on your upbringing as well. And I mean that in terms of, I feel like I always thought the game and certain basics I know, like just simple like being in help defense, those like little shell drills and simple things that some might you be surprised don't know, and it's just the little small things, you know. And I would say for me, the main thing was like weight room. I never was, I never lifted weights, even in high school. New York really, guys, you know yeah, I mean? we, we never did that. I didn't, I didn't like weights. And uh, so I, I had to do that often in college, you know, the conditioning. And just the pace of the game was, is a, was a lot faster, like dealing with a lot of athletes. When I first got there, I was, you know, doing well, but I couldn't make a shot. You know what I mean? And then I think it was just, you know, the pace. So, you know, after I got used to that, I was okay. Cool, cool. So now, brother, I'm going to tell you. Your college coach is the most mentioned guy. He got to be one of the most mentioned guys on my show since we started. Oh, yeah? I'm talking about guys from Long Island to New York. Yeah, Billy's dope. PSAL. Catholic School League. When I'm talking about, I'm talking about the older cats who came up like in the '80s and '70s, late '70s, early '80s. Talking about Billy Donovan. Yeah, he's dope. And the he's work dope. he used to give God. But from what I know, his work ethic was crazy. If I, I can only imagine him as a player, him as a coach. His work ethic is crazy. I remember one time his wife told me a story like he would shoot, like shoot. Let's say I don't know. Let's just say. 100 shots every time he missed like he would scrape his knuckles like on the ground like if he missed two in a row all kind of crazy stuff so i know like he's he's dedicated so i know his work ethic was crazy john johnson star at Talenton and virginia university said man we heard about the white kid but we didn't know he had game like that yeah James nah. Mason, you name them. They all gave them up. And, you know, every now and again, the names just come up, and, and I just give the chair a noise. Like, here we go again. Yeah. Even, at, even when, when I was in school, he would do, do shooting competitions with us sometimes, you know? Like, he couldn't jump high enough, but, like, he still, his jump shot, it, it wasn't touching nothing, no rim or net when he shoot. And, and when he missed, he probably went outside and struck his knuckles on the floor. <laughs> nah, he was chilling at this point. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right. So what was your biggest game, right? Because you had a few, man. Clubs player, big shots, all SEC. What was like one of your uh, best games that you remember that stick out to you? Uh, for me, I would say when we played UCLA in the second round to go to the Sweet 16, uh, I played a really good game, you know. We was uh, game was going back and forth, and I had like you know probably a good ten points in like the last four minutes, and and kind of took over that game, and we was able to get to the Sweet Sixteen. So for me personally, I I got UCLA. Nice, nice. What was the numbers like? I finished that game with like twenty one and and four assists, but for me it was. I mean, I've had bigger games numbers wise, but the situation, like we in the tournament, you know what I mean, and just how I scored those points and the time, the timeliness of it had me. That for me, that was my my. No, it, and 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 one on one of the biggest stages in college. Right, basketball. exactly. That I'm factoring that in, like that we was in the NCAA tournament at that time, you know. So you from Brooklyn, New York? Go to Christ the King. Then you play for Florida. You go down there. 
and you lead the school in assists while you were playing. Right. And then you also like fourth in scoring. Right. At five eight. I always tell people at times, people are like, yo, if I had your height and I go and there's guys shorter than me that would give me the business. Or that's in the league or playing overseas. Right. It doesn't make a difference about the the heart, man. And yeah. and you have a big heart, man. Appreciate that. Oh, for sure, for sure. So but I that saw, was also though, that was another reason I chose Florida because for that to happen. You got to be on the court, you know what I mean? And, and I know Billy, him being a small guard himself, like, that he, you know, wouldn't be afraid to play me, you know what I mean? Some some kids, man, they just choose a school because of the name or yeah. big time for what other people say, like, oh, I'm going to Kentucky or I'm going here. You got to choose a school for you. It was yeah. fits you. I know too many people, they go, next thing you know, they transferring, all of that. You got to choose a school for you. I, I preach that all the time, brother. That's that's so real. And make sure that you're gonna get a quality education and the basketball program fits your style of play. Exactly. Exactly. Definitely. So I, I saw a documentary, actually I posted it uh some months back. Um documentary you did that's on YouTube. Oh, the grit, grit media. Yes. Tell me how did that come about? To be honest, I don't even remember, but I know it was just, uh, I got a phone call and they said they were, uh, you know, they do a few different plays or whatever. And uh, they asked me would I be interested. They was like talking about, they wanted to get to the overseas people, you know, and people, the process of overseas life and stuff like that. So I, I was all for it. And I was had no problem. So they, you know, they, they flew down or whatever they did. It took about three, they, three, four days they filmed, you know, summer tournaments. I think we played on West 4th, like two games. Uh, they came with me to work out, you know, and just, you know, talked about overseas life and stuff like that. Cool. I, I thought it was dope, man. Did a real nice piece of it, man. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So where we at now? Um. You just mentioned it, life overseas, right? Right. Now, things didn't happen for you in the NBA with all the numbers you had and the great career that you had in Florida, and you decided to take your talents overseas. What was that process like? Oh, you know, um, it it was difficult, it, and it, it's, it never gets easy. And some people might think it's sweet, but that is a real grind. So my first my first job I went to Italy, and my mom my mom flew down with me for like the first about the first month she stayed with me, and I needed that because without her there I probably would have quit my my first mm. month. I was like in a small village like fifty minutes outside of Rome, so me being from the city, it was a language barrier. Uh, things closed like they shut everything down from like twelve to two. The first, I remember the first, when we got there, I'm thinking I want some breakfast. I'm thinking, you know, I'm gonna get some pancakes, eggs, bacon, something. The, me and my mom were in a car with the GM and he pulled up over to a gas station and got like croissants and stuff. I'm like, I'm like what the hell is this? You know what I mean? But they that's, start breakfast. that's their type of, you know what I mean? So I had to get used to that and you know, the style of play was different. And then sometimes you deal with late pay. Uh, my coach that I had my first year was asshole. Crazy. Treated me like a like a kid. Like he was bugging out on me. But uh, I got through it, man. My second year I went to Poland and I played EuroLeague. So not, not many people get to that opportunity ever. And then I was doing it second year. But that was the hardest year for me. Once again, the coach was treating me terrible. You know, when they when you young, they over there, they mess with you. You know what I mean? So for me, I was thankful. I feel like I got the worst two years in terms of, like, dealing with coaches and where I'm at. I got it out the way. So now something that somebody might think is terrible, I'm like, this is great. You know what I mean? Like right, when, right, when, I, right, when I got to France, like, my man Chris Joe had came from – the Brooklyn Nets, Chris Joseph, one of my best friends, we met in France, and he was like, he was struggling in terms of like life, like locker rooms, maybe like this is what. I'm like, yo, bro, 
I done been some places. Trust me, you good right now. You don't got to worry about the money going to be on time. You good. So it's definitely, it's not easy, but you get used to it. And as you get older, it get easier. You know what I mean? You know how to navigate through certain situations. Uh, you in a big city is good. Me and my man, like, two Holloway, we always hang out in Turkey. Brandon Frazier came and visited me. So there's a bunch of people. One of my best friends from college, Kenny Boynton. Everybody's out there. So it's like, it's, you got people, you'll be all right. That, uh, that should be some kind of network set up for guys who from New York City who just coming or getting overseas and there are guys that's already over there that can kind of help them if a family member don't go with them, you know what I'm saying? Right, kind definitely. Of help them navigate. And that, that's where coming most teams, you know, usually have, you know, at least three three Americans on the team, at least three to five. And those those guys got to help the, the young ones when they come. Because one thing I can say, no matter what anybody tell you, the kid could be listening you only going to learn that by going through it. There's it's no other way around it. You know what I mean? But definitely, hopefully, the kids have, I think, all of, you know, people that's been overseas for a while. You got some rookie. Take care of them. Help them out the best way you can. Teach them. Be there for them. It's going to be ups and downs. Long nights. You, you missing holidays from your family. You missing things. Everything. So, it's a grind. All right. All right. So what what would you been doing in the meantime to get yourself back on the court, or you just laid up for right now? Now right now, I, uh, well, I'm two months out of surgery, and I just started uh, rehabbing. I actually got to go back tomorrow, so I'm doing that right now, and I'm you know networking a little bit with with coach, and I'm trying to get into that maybe. So I'm gotcha. I'm not saying I'm hanging him up, but I'm like you know with this injury, it's definitely giving me something to think about. You know what I mean? So I'll see which which way I go with that. No doubt, no doubt. So I posted something today, man. Uh, my guy reached out to me like, "Yo, G, you gotta post that that uh, that game between uh, Levance Phil and yourself." Oh yeah, Gersh. Yes, at Gersh, at Gersh, right? Yeah, that was crazy. That now, game was crazy. Levance, I, I, I definitely gotta get you up here, my brother, uh, because I put up a post about. Uh, think uh, Fulcher, he's the new guard at Zavarian. Then Sean Fulcher, and I said, uh, they haven't been a guard this good since Paco Screen and kind of skipped mm -hmm. over Levance. Uh, and people went nuts on my page, like, yo, G, how you gonna forget Levance? I was like, you right, yeah, so Levance I posted him uh, the next day. Definitely. Yeah, now that game was crazy though. That that's another thing, street boy. A lot, a lot of people say they they don't they don't play outside, and being from New York, I I don't understand that. It's like that's how we grew up. That's that's what give us a, a certain edge. Like and I I think that's good for the game for 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 a kid growing up. Even me, like I'm playing overseas, or whatever. That help you stay in shape and keep you a competitive edge. The crowd, the, you know, everything is lit. I don't know. I don't understand how people don't play that. Like we got, I they got, get spoiled. I think I get spoiled, you, man. They yeah, get played a few gyms, and it's like oh, I don't want to play outside. Uh, like, Parks are empty. Like, come on, I'm playing against Levance at big time high school. We went to Pitt, so we playing high level basketball and where we grew up at. Like that's that's dope to me. No, nah, that that's definitely official, man. Uh, and, and most times they got to see it on TV or pay for that. Right, that's you getting high level basketball. You going to compete, and we outside like, like everybody like Pro City. I don't even like playing in Pro City. No disrespect, is in the gym. If I'm playing summer ball, I want to play outside. That's me though. Yeah, dudes playing in the gym in Pro City acting bougie, foul. Yeah. Offensive foul. Yeah, like for me, like especially. Like Gersh, you know, that's my neighborhood. You know, it's East New York, but it's all the same, you know. Right. I get my cousins that rarely get to see me play to come check me out, like right there. Like, why not give that back to, you know, my family can see me easily, you know? So, I don't know. I think it's dope. No, nah, no, nah, that's real, man. That's real. So, nowadays, do you think kids uh, can benefit from playing AU? 
Definitely. In today's, in today's game. Definitely. I mean, you see him playing AU, you see him, you putting yourself up against the other players in the country so you could gauge yourself better. It's like you don't want to just stay in New York and only play one group of kids. You get to see, measure yourself. And then, not for nothing, I mean, you're going to play in front of a million college coaches. And the goal is, you know, coming from where we come from, if you could get that college education for free and save your parents some money or putting yourself in debt, you won if you could do that. So I think, I mean, AU is big. I, I don't follow it as much now, so I don't know what's going on. But got to play AU. Yeah, and then like yourself, who uh, we use in eighth grade, a coach was coming to see somebody else, and saw you. Yeah, yeah, that when I yeah that the Jafet story, yeah, exactly. So you never know, man. You gotta yep. play. Definitely, definitely. So now your toughest opponent in high school, college, and professional ball. Your toughest opponent in high school, college, and pros. We talking New York or just wherever. Wherever. Uh, for me coming up, I would say from from literally fifth grade all the way to high school, a kid from out of uh, Wisconsin, Corey Lucius. Mm. Uh, he played with DTA. He went to Michigan State. I think he finished at Iowa State. Mm -hmm. We always had battles. I don't know what it was. It could be literally I'd be playing all tournament, missing, missing. We play him, I'm hot, vice versa. Like, one game in Portland, they beat us bad. He had 37. I had, like, 32. So, we always, we always had crazy battles. So, I, anybody who listen to me, listen to me, I'm going to tell you, he, he's the one. I watch him destroy Brandon Jennings. Mm. Like, I wa destroy, like, not even on the same court. Like, you know what I mean? So, he was always, he was ill to me. Like, I, I know I had to come to play when we played against him. Uh, college. Uh, another short player, actually, Devon Downey out of South mm. Carolina. Right. He was, a, he was a handful. We used to double team him, everything. He was a tough cover. Mm. He, he was, you know, he had the freedom to do what he wanted, and he, he was really good, do everything. And then the pro level uh, is a, it's hard. You know, I forget some, but uh, a kid named. Darius Adams, I think he played like Division Two, but he making like mil, two mil in China now. Woo! Yeah, he he he's tough. He but it and he's great player, but it's like he got a mentality kind of like Russ Smith, like it's just relentless. Like he attack attack, he could shoot five times in a row, miss 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 miss. He's shooting six without even thinking about it. So the to have to guard somebody with that, that kind of mentality is, is tough. Wow. All right. So we're going to do this right now. We're going to do our top fives, right? Mm -hmm. In your eyes, from your perspective, nobody else's. My eyes. Top five players from Brooklyn. Ever? In your eyes. Uh, Sebastian Telfair. This is no order. Sebastian right. Telfair. Stephon Marbury. Two late We got it. That's two. Uh, from Brooklyn. Me. That's three. Luke. That's right. That's right. From Brooklyn. Ever. City of God. Man. I'm drawing blanks. I can't even think of who, who from Brooklyn. Help me out a little bit. Uh, that's helping you right there. From what I hear, I, I didn't, I didn't see Z Irv <laughs> that much. I didn't see Z Irv a lot. My man just said Gary. Yeah, yeah I heard G Irv. Gary Irvin. Yeah, I heard he was crazy. I didn't, but I didn't, yeah. I didn't, I personally didn't like see him in those days. Oh, Lance, I'm bugging. Lance. There you go. There, there you go. go, Lance. I'm bugging, definitely. That's, That's right. why I said I'm drawing a blank. No, nah, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. So what I can do now, this is our next top five. Top five New York City all time. 
I'm a, I'm gonna start off. I'm gonna go out for me, Bashy, Lance, Bashy, Lance, uh, Marbury, Kenny Anderson, uh, Marbury, Kenny, what's that for? Mm -hmm. Marbury, Kenny Anderson. I know somebody going to somebody going to throw somebody out there. Yeah, so that should be crazy, man. There's so many people out there. Yeah. Uh, Kenny Anderson. See, mine's mine's uh, a little bit. See, like my man said, Jabbar. Like I don't even know. Yeah, right. I, I'm see, assuming see, he's see talking about Kareem or Dujo. I didn't even go. know he's from New York. That's yeah. What? I didn't even know that. All right, check this out. So, um, the the school with the most city championships and oh, I the heard most Kate Sapp was crazy in high school. Right. Listen. The, the team with the most city championships and the most NBA players come from the Bronx. Oh, it do? Are you telling yes. me that? Uh. The, yeah, I'm telling you that. DeWitt Clinton. Say that again? DeWitt Clinton High School. Oh, see, I don't even know what's... I've never even heard of that. Right. They're in the Bronx. Tiny Archibald High School. Mm. They won 18 city championships. And they also, that's the top of the city. And they also put 18 players in the NBA. That's the most in the city. Yeah, see, that stuff I, I don't even know. You know what I mean? I don't and know. look, bro, I started this uh, show last year, March 30th, and a lot of this stuff I'm finding out as well. Yeah, I, I didn't even know that. So sure. shout out to them. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So, um, do you, you know, I know you're in between deciding whether you want to come back and whether you want to coach or not. I'm going to let you know whether you decide to do, brother. We're proud of you. I want to say thank you for giving us your talent and sharing it with us all these years. And we're happy that you accomplished all the things you accomplished and being a stand-up guy, and I know a lot of people in Brooklyn and New York City are proud of you. I appreciate that, real talk. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate that. Nah, no doubt. See you come up young, brother. See you come up Try. since you was very young. Watching from afar, and I'm, I'm happy, you know, the man that you turned out to, man. So I appreciate you. that. Thanks a lot. No doubt. So you come on basketball heads. Usually my artist is here, but he's mm -hmm. out of town right now. Okay. But the pictures will be drawn. Um, and you also have a nomination, right? Because Mike Moore nominated you. Mm -hmm. yes, oh, sir. yeah. I heard that. I heard I'm supposed to pass it down. So we're going to get, uh, I nominate Ashton Gibbs. No doubt. No doubt. Make that yeah. happen. So you, you contact him and make this happen. And, uh, We'll, we'll definitely uh, be in contact with you when I uh, get that picture for you. All right, definitely. I'll hit him up for you. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. All right, thank you for your time. Me. I appreciate that, yep. No doubt. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys, for joining us. Basketball Heads Live. Appreciate you. I'm your host, Glenn, Pooh, Harden. And you know, Basketball Heads Live, the official home. For New York City basketball. Peace.